This video is going to be extremely helpful to you because I'm going to show you the entire pyramid of skills. And this is going to help you a lot in understanding what exact thing you have to practice based on your current level. Hi everyone and welcome to this new video where I'm going to talk about the milestones in your training. So I'm going to clarify what are the different stages in the learning process when it comes to your training skills. As you've probably heard in other videos I've uploaded on this channel, your training skills develop like a pyramid. So you need to have the basic skills first and then you can improve bit by bit and go to more complex skills one step at a time. So you won't be able to improve at all if you try to start from the the top level skills, the most advanced ones, without having a good foundations on all the more basic skills. And this is a core concept that makes our your training method so successful. And it's why people are enthusiastic about that because they see actual results in their real musical life because of this simple thing. We make sure that everybody has the basic skills covered before they try to develop the next one, the more complex ones. So this video is going to be extremely helpful to you because I'm going to show you the entire pyramid of skills. This means that I'm going to show you what is the most basic skill you must absolutely have and then what is the next one that you should develop and then the next one and then the next one and the next one until we have a complete overview of the pyramid of your training skills. And this is going to help you a lot in understanding what exact thing you have to practice based on your current level. Of course, it will be impossible for me to assess your current level here, but you can assess your level by yourself by following our workshop. If you haven't yet, it's a free three hour long workshop about your training and you can check it out from clicking on the link in the description section below. It's full of valuable content about your training. As I said, it's going to help you assess your current level and it's going to give you practical direction and exercises to practice based on that. And not only that, because it's also going to give you an overview of our ear training method and it includes clear explanations on the most important scientific findings related to our perception of musical pitch which are the basis of our method and lastly it will show you what exercises you should absolutely avoid based on those scientific findings so don't wait click on the link in the description section below and sign up to our workshop for free okay let's talk about what's the first main stage in the development of ear training skills well the first first essential skill in your training is pitch matching. So what is pitch matching? Pitch matching is the ability to match a given pitch with your voice. Of course, if it's out of your range, you can match it an octave lower or higher or whatever. This ability shows evidence that you're able to understand whether a note is the same of another note, so a pitch is the same as another pitch or not. This is the main point here. This is the most essential skill in your training ever. And if you don't have the ability to understand whether a note is the same of another note or is higher or lower than another note, you need to absolutely master this before going on anything else at all in your training or you won't see any results whatsoever. Whatever you do, doesn't matter. This ability is absolutely a must have that no musicians can live without. And you can guess why, because if you can't understand Understand whether a note is the same of another note, what else can you do? I mean, of course, this will prevent you from being able to recognize melodies, chords, from improvising for real, like creating musical ideas in your head and then playing on your instrument. All of this is going to be impossible without this basic ability. This is the very first important stage in the development of your training skills. Let's now talk about the second stage. The second stage is about creating a basic mental representation of the tonality, starting with the major key. We start on the major key because it's by far the most used one in Western music and it's just a great starting point that allows you to cover a lot of different musical genres, a lot of different styles, and it still is the basis to then go on and work on other keys like harmonic minor keys, melodic minor keys, etc. So what does it mean to have a basic mental representation of 
the tonality? Well, it means being able to imagine a major key, to being able to understand what's the tonic of the key that you're listening to in a whatever musical piece. You start to have a basic mental representation of the key, of the tonality, when you are able to sing a major key starting from a given note. So if you're able to do that, you probably already have a basic mental representation of the tonality that allows you to imagine a group of sounds of notes starting from a given tonic. And this is absolutely essential for anything else you will do in your training and in music in general. Because any piece of music is built around a structure, which is a tonal structure, and the structure is the key, the tonality. So whatever you do in music, there's always a tonality in place. And so being able to create and understand the tonality of a musical piece is essential for you to being able to decode the notes and the chords and whatever is being played inside the musical piece. But another very important reason why a basic mental representation of the tonality is absolutely essential is that scientific findings clearly show that our perception of musical pitch is tonal, is context dependent. So the same pitch, the same note, chord, whatever, interval, whatever, sounds extremely different depending on the key it's included in. So we need to absolutely practice your training in a tonal way. So taking into account the key, and the sound of the key, and how the sound of the key influences the sound, the sonic sensation of each note, chord, and all the musical elements in general. So as soon as we have basic pitch matching skill, it's extremely important to develop, to work on developing a basic mental representation of the tonality. If you want to know more about the scientific researches that I'm talking about, and if you want to also understand why interval-based exercises are ineffective based on the findings included in these researches, I invite you to check out another video I made. You will find the link to it up here and a link in the description section below. You will find links to the scientific papers themselves in the description section of that video. So you have a reference for anything that I say in that video and also in this one. That being said, I hope the second point is clear. So let's talk about the third stage in the development of your training skills. The third stage is internalizing key scholars, chord scholars, etc. These are not visual colors. You know, I've explained it in many videos on this channel. If you don't know about these concepts yet, I invite you to check out this video up here. You will also find another link in the description section below. I will explain briefly what are key scholars, colors of the chords, etc. The key scholars is the sensation, the sonic sensation that each note assumes within the key. We have seven notes within the key and and we can name them as scale degrees. So we have the first degree, also known as the tonic, the second degree, third, fourth, etc. Each one of these degrees has a very specific sonic sensation. For example, the tonic note, the first degree, sounds extremely stable. It's the most stable note, and it has the feeling of being the gravitational center for all the other notes in the key. All the other notes in the key wants to resolve, creates a feeling of resolution by moving toward the first degree note. So this is kind of a description of the key scholar of the first degree. The seventh degree, on the contrary, is the most unstable note. It's the note that has the most tension and that absolutely demands resolution by moving toward the first degree. What you need to understand is that all of these sensations can be internalized and they are the same for any major key. So no matter if you're in the key of E major, uh, C major, major, G major, whatever, the first degree always has that sonic sensation. The seventh always has its sonic sensation. The fifth, the fourth, they always have their own sonic sensation. So when you understand and when you internalize the sonic sensation of each scale degree, you can recognize each scale degree in whatever musical piece you hear. And it's actually very intuitive to recognize them because you recognize them based on the 
the feeling they have, on the sensation they have. It really becomes like recognizing visual colors. If I ask you how are you able to recognize blue and how are you able to see that it's blue and not red or green or whatever, there's not a logical explanation because of that. It's that you've been trained by your parents, by your teachers to associate the name blue with that particular color that has a specific sensation and you recognize the color blue because you created this association. The same can be done with the keys colors. So you can train yourself to recognize each scale degree based on its own keys color, its own sonic sensation. And this is how great musicians are able to recognize notes and chords by ear very intuitively and quickly. It's because they have internalized the sonic sensation of each scale degree, of each chord, etc. I've talked about notes in this example, but the same is equal for chords. Each chord has its own keys color, its own sonic sensation, and based on the scale degree that it's built on, it assumes a different sonic sensation. So the chord built on the fifth degree of the scale has a very tensive feeling. So it creates, it's unstable and it wants to resolve on the first degree chord. So the chord built on the first degree has a sensation of stability and rest. And similarly for, for all the other chords uh, that are built within the key. So the concept still is the same. You can recognize chords by feeling the sonic sensation they have. And this is what you ideally have to do in the third stage of the development of your ear training skills. And the important thing that you have to understand, and I think this is almost self-explanatory, you can't develop this skill, the skill of recognizing the sonic sensation of chords and notes, before you have a mental representation of the tonality. Because if you don't have a mental representation of the scale, how could you be able to recognize which scale degree it is? If you can't even even imagine how a major scale sounds like, you're not going to be able to recognize the scale degree of a given note or of a given chord. Even worse, if you start working on this before you have pitch matching skills, you can't even recognize if a note is the same or different from another one. How can you imagine an entire scale in your mind and then how can you imagine and can quickly recognize scale degrees based on their sonic sensation. It's impossible. It's totally impossible. This is why it's extremely important to follow this sequence and to go and to work on the right task that is adequate to your current skill level. Because if you don't, you surely are going to make the mistake of trying to develop a skill when you're not ready for it yet. And this is going to prevent you from improving and it's going to leave you frustrated and it will crush your motivation. And this is not what we want. So this is only a little digression to help you understand why it's extremely important to follow the right step-by-step -step sequence when it comes to ear training. Let's now talk about the fourth stage in the development of your training skills. The fourth stage in the development of your training skills is working on improving speed in recognizing notes and chords and also recalling notes and chords and also improving your short-term musical memory and generally speaking improving the efficiency of the entire relative pitch system. This is achieved in different ways, so both speed and short-term musical memory can be improved by grouping notes together, so working on internalizing patterns of notes and using them to basically being able to recognize multiple notes at the same time or to recall multiple notes at the same time, and the patterns that are mostly used are scales, portions of scales, triads, and and generally speaking like arpeggios and things like that. So at this point in the learning process, you already have a great understanding of the tonality and understanding of the keys colors, the sonic sensation of notes and chords. You can already recognize notes and chords by ear, completely by ear, without needing to use a 
on external instruments to help. So it's important to understand this. Right now, stage four of the learning process, it's actually important to focus on improving the efficiency, the speed, and the ease and fluidity that you have in recognizing notes, chords, improvising new melodic ideas, recalling melodic and harmonic ideas, etc. I'm not going to talk about it that much because it's going to be too vast and complicated to discuss it in a YouTube video, but I've made other YouTube videos where I talk about these concepts more in depth. For example, I've made a video about short-term musical memory, how to develop it. You can find a link to it up here and in the description section below. Other than that, I've made a video about how to recognize melodies and chords, etc. And I also talk about a few strategies that you can adopt to improve the speed in recognizing notes and chords. You will find links to those videos in the description section below. I think that right now I gave you a general idea on how you can work on improving speed, musical memory, and the general efficiency of your relative pitch system. So we're ready to move on and go to the fifth stage in the development of your training skills. The fifth stage is about internalizing, so recognizing, recalling, etc. non-diatonic notes, non-diatonic chords, and other, generally speaking, non-diatonic musical elements. So notes and chords that go out of the key, of the main key of the piece. These are not key shifts, so it's important to understand that these are passage notes and chords, like for example, secondary dominant chords. There are multiple reasons why it's extremely important to start working on non diatonic chords and notes, secondary dominance, etc. at this point in the learning process and not earlier. And one of the reasons why it's so important to do that now and not earlier is because secondary dominance, non diatonic notes and non diatonic chords tend to really make the tonal context kind of a bit not easy to understand. Indeed, one of the peculiarities of secondary dominant chords is that they create a momentary illusion in which the tonic note appears to be a note that's not the tonic note of the main key. So it's like if they shift the tonality for just a, a momentary passage. So the tonality is going to go back to the original key very, very quickly, but there is a moment right after the secondary dominant chord plays where you feel as if the tonic note has been shifted to another note. And this is very tricky at the beginning, especially if you are not able to quickly recognize the tonic note of a given musical piece. Because if you can't recognize the tonic note of a given musical piece and you hear a secondary dominant chord, there is a high chance, a high probability that you will think that the fake tonic note, the one that's being set up by the secondary dominant chord is the main tonic note of the main key, okay? Whereas it's not. So you have to be very, very good and very, very quick at recognizing tonic notes before you can actually move on to and work on this kind of context where you have notes that are outside the key, chords that are outside the key, and that creates an illusion of a key shift, basically. This is very important to understand, and it's just one of the reasons why you have to wait until this point before it makes sense to actually start to work work on non-diatonic chords, recognizing non-diatonic chords, non-diatonic notes, etc. Okay, let's now talk about the sixth and last stage in the development of your training skills. This is understanding and managing key shifts. So at this point, we can recognize chords, notes, and we can recall notes, chords, imagine melodies, etc. very quickly, very well, very easily within an harmonic context, a simple harmonic context, including one single key. And we also understand how to recognize non-diatonic notes, non-diatonic chords, etc. And we're able to do that. So the next point is how to use this knowledge, to use this ability to recognize and to apply these abilities to recognize musical pieces that includes key 
shifts. So this can be jazz musical pieces, classical musical pieces, pieces that generally speaking includes multiple key shifts and that change key rapidly. The fact that a musical piece includes key shifts doesn't absolutely mean that you actually have to delete the entire abilities you've developed up to now and start creating a totally new way to recognize notes and chords because the piece has key shifts in it. No, absolutely not. The main cognitive processes, the main thought processes that you've learned up to now are going to be totally applicable to music including key shifts, okay? The difficult part here is that you need to be very quick at understanding when a key shift happens and you need to be able to recognize the new tonic very quickly and you need to be able to then create a mental representation of the new tonality very quickly and then you will start to be able to apply all the skills that you've developed up to stage five. So you will be able to recognize notes and chords based on the feeling they have inside the new key, okay? You need to develop the ability and to get used to understanding and managing key shifts. This is the only thing that you need to add. It's not easy, sounds like it's easy, but it's not because of course it creates a more blurry context where you have more difficulties understanding and orienting yourself because the structure is not as simple as a simple major key, okay? You have maybe multiple keys that are actually changing rapidly and so of course the more rapid the change the more difficult it is to orient yourself within such a complex structure. So, but the prerequisite that you absolutely need before you can even think of recognizing music including key shifts and uh, complex harmonic context is a very good ability in recognizing simple tonal music. This is why this is the sixth stage in the development of ear training skills. So before I end this video, I just wanna make you think about one thing especially for those of you that are still practicing intervals, etc. I just want you to notice how practicing intervals really reverse this process, this entire process. When you practice intervals, you're actually focusing on recognizing notes without the presence of, a, without the clear presence of a tonality. Basically, you're recognizing notes atonally. So you're basically changing key each time you hear a new interval and you have to recognize it, okay? And this is what you do. You keep changing key and keep changing key at every question you're asked. And this is how your training apps works, those your training apps that are based on intervals. And similarly, it happens with chord quality recognition exercises where you have to identify if it's a major chord, a minor chord, a seventh chord, etc. This is the same thing. The tonality keeps changing, keeps moving. There's not a clear tonality behind these kind of exercises. So you are basically starting at point six and you're going back. Actually, you're you're not even going backward because they don't even take into consideration the fact that you need to have pitch matching skills or that you need to be able to sing the scale and they don't even take into account that step three is a thing where you actually can recognize notes and chords based on the sonic sensation they assume within the key so this is just to emphasize how wrong an approach like that is okay it's totally off you're starting from the end from the last stage you're starting from the top of the pyramid and you're you're trying to build things up there without having a, any foundation, okay? This is why everybody who doesn't have this foundation to begin with, who, who didn't develop it by chance or for other reasons, anyone who doesn't have these basic requirements fails at interval-based your training every single time. I haven't seen anybody starting without pitch matching skills or starting without being able to sing the scale, going practice practicing interval-based exercises and getting better. I haven't, I have never seen it. So, and this is why, and this is the reason why it happens, because you're literally starting from the top of the pyramid, trying to build something that can't be built that way. It's like trying to build a house from the roof. Who would do that? I mean, it can't be done. So, so this is the logic of how you develop your training skills and you should follow it. Doesn't matter if it's with our method of you do it on your own, just follow Follow it. Do whatever you want, but don't try to start from the top of the pyramid because you're not going to get any results. You're only going to be frustrated and you'll probably give up. So don't do it. This is my suggestion and I hope this comes through. I hope this video 
helped you understand a bit more about your training and helped you understand how to face it in the best way possible given your current level. So again, if you wanna be able to assess your current level, if you wanna see exercises that help you get results fast, I invite you to check out our free Your Training Workshop. You can access it by clicking the link below. You will also see a review of the main scientific findings that are at the core of our method. You will also be able to try out our method and see how it works and understand the principles included in it more in depth. I think it's going to be very valuable and helpful to you if you're interested in your training. So don't wait, click on the link below and sign up for our free workshop. You can also check out our website if you want. You will find a link to it in the description section below. Please subscribe to the channel and leave a like to this video. I thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.